Welcome to Lent, everyone. Whoa, 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 don't get too excited. Hold your enthusiasm back. No? Actually, I think I got more enthusiasm in terms of the response to saying you're enthusiastic than the actual enthusiasm of Lent. Okay. Lent, everyone's favorite season. No? I can't imagine why not. It's a season, it's a season, Lent is 40 days until, uh, from now, uh, well, from Ash Wednesday until the day before Easter, um, and the 40 days represent the story you just heard, Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness. So it's meant to be, meant to be our uh, wilderness time, our time of testing. Um, and so, of course, we, uh, we recognize that appropriately. Uh, we historically have taken down all the nice decorations in the church and replaced them with purple things. You can't sing hallelujahs during Lent. You're not supposed to eat certain foods. Um, and don't forget to fast. Oh, and then there's almsgiving. Give all your money to the church. Who's doing those things? Aren't we all doing those? No? Okay. When I was a kid, uh, of course, I... I I was a cathedral choir boy, you know, high church Anglicans, you know, and so we did all the stuff. Everything that was shiny got covered with purple cloth. We didn't sing any hallelujahs. The hymns were all really dark and dreary. It was almost like somebody had thrown a blanket over the place, because that's Lent, because that's the way the story goes, right? Jesus accidentally wanders out into the wilderness where, you know, it's all pain and suffering for 40 days, and, you know, he meets the devil who, according to one particular TV movie, looks remarkably like Barack Obama. Um, but, uh, and then is tested by the devil and somehow manages to overcome that temptation and then struggle out from the desert, famished, where he r finds food and then goes and teaches people. So that's not how the story goes, is it? The story, and I, this is why I like Luke's version. We, we hear all three over the course of a, you know, the three-year lectionary period, but I, I like Luke's because it begins with, first of all, it begins with uh, the Spirit leads Jesus into the desert. And that, to me, says he went there on purpose, with purpose, and with God. So anything that happens out there, the devil doesn't really stand a chance. Not that there is a devil, but we'll have that conversation another time. Um, but it's about being tempted and challenged and wondering and finding your way. See, I think Jesus went to find himself, literally. And then when he comes out of the desert, um, we, unfortunately, for some reason, the lectionary doesn't give you verse 14, which says, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus went off to teach and preach and care for people. He went into the desert, led by the Spirit. He came out of the desert, filled with the power of the Spirit. Now, I know what you're thinking. He already had that. Because, of course, everyone reads their Bible, and they know that the story that comes before this is the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan. Right? Jesus goes to be baptized by John the Baptist. He's baptized, and then a dove, the sign of the Spirit, comes down and lands on Jesus, and a voice is heard saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So, sign of the Spirit, God's voice saying, this is my Son, off into the desert. See, I think, I think Jesus went into the desert to find out who he is and how he's supposed to be. Unfortunately, We've always framed this wilderness time as darkness and shadows. The devil's hiding behind every corner, ready to tempt us. We should be afraid. Why? The power of the Spirit is on your side. Why would you be afraid? In fact, I'll just add my voice to Jesus repeatedly throughout all the gospel stories saying, don't be afraid. Wherever you go, God goes with you. The Spirit is with you. Don't be afraid. So I think we, we, we look at temptation and we look at, uh, at the devil as being the thing that leads us astray. Okay, fair enough. Except that doesn't mean you should be afraid of it. You should just know that when you are faced with it, 
the Spirit is on your side. And living with the Spirit in your life, living with God in your life, helps us to face all of those challenges. It helps us also to recognize all those opportunities, those opportunities that we might have missed if we thought it was a challenge not worth taking. Spirit's on your side. And that's just, that's just a wilderness story. Let's see how we get in and out of that, shall we? Ash Wednesday. Did anyone do ashes on Ash Wednesday? It's not really part of, necessarily part of our tradition, but in many traditions, um, you receive the sign of the cross on your forehead in ash. And the ashes are made from the burning of the Palm Sunday branches from the previous Palm Sunday. And if you're really good at this, by the way, you, you do the burning of the palms ahead of time so that the ash isn't hot when you stick it on someone's forehead. <laughs> Although that does inspire them to, you know, really pay attention. Um, but the sign of the cross. And as that happens, as that happens, the formula for that ritual includes the words, um, from dust you have come and from dust you will return. So we start, many traditions start the season of Lent Reminding you, you're dirt. <laughs> but hang on, that's a good thing. We go, no it's not, and we feel like that, but it, let me just remind you, first of all, that in the dirt is life. Soil is the building block, building blocks of life, right? Look at the earth, look at creation. It's where we come from. By the way, also, I don't know if you're aware of this, but recently uh, scientists have now discovered, and they're quite certain, that we're all stardust. I don't know if you saw that story in the, the paper, but you, you are stardust. Everything on the earth, even the earth itself, has in it pieces of the rest of the universe. So we're connected to the universe, too, not just the planet, but the universe. If that's not awesome enough for you yet, remember that the other thing about being reminded that you're from the earth is that's a reminder of the, the original story. Right? Adam and Eve. Adam means uh, made from the earth, essentially. And if you remember the story, that is how it works. God spontaneously creates everything in the story except Adam who is made from what's already been created in the image of God. So, here we are now, having reframed that first day of Lent, walking into Lent in the power of the Spirit, created in the image of God, and connected to everything around us. That should frame your Lent a little bit differently than the wilderness and shadowy, scary things. If it doesn't, here's the thing about Lent. We've, we've tended, Lent is one of the two seasons that's kind of a preparing season, right? Advent's the other one. In fact, those, those two seasons used to be connected by the same color. They both used to be purple in the church. But, but then somewhere along the line, we, we decided that Advent was preparation for the coming of the king, and so that should be blue instead of purple. So lots of churches use blue instead to differentiate it from the penitential season, which is Lent. I've already made it depressing. But it's not. It's not. In, in the early days of the church, the season of Lent was the season that you prepared people who were going to be baptized at Easter. You know, the day of resurrection, the day of new life. The word Lent itself actually means, it comes from an old English, old Dutch word that means spring, spring ahead, right? Lengthening of days, new life. It's not about darkness in the absence of life. It's about, perhaps you could even consider it the life that comes from the darkness. Think of all those things that are still in the ground right now under all that snow that are going to be alive soon. So historically, the church has had practices that you did during Lent, things that you did. Right? More, most recently, that has come to mean, for most people, what did you give up for Lent? Now, I don't know if you saw this on the, 
uh, on Facebook, but I actually posted a little meme on Facebook that was, Jeff gives it up for Lent, and it's a guy going, yay, Lent! <laughs> yeah. Because you should say, yay, Lent. It's the time that you can do things to learn about yourself and your relationship with God to, that brings you to the new life of Easter, that brings you into spring. So instead of the, giving up those, I remember we used to do stuff like you, we give up, you give up important stuff like coffee or chocolate or smoking, right? And it'd be just kind of, oh, I'm just giving that up for Lent. Oh, okay, but why? You, you, you want to give something up for Lent, okay, but why? Is it just so that you don't have that temptation or that you have to face that temptation for 40 days? Knowing full well you'll probably start drinking coffee Easter morning by the gallon? Or are you doing something with it? Is it giving you an opportunity to focus? Is it giving you an opportunity to, to address yourself and think about yourself? See, I think, I, I think a far more effective way of doing that is to set aside a little time each day for some spiritual wandering. So here's a practice. Here's a practice for you for Lent. A little spiritual wandering. You could actually do it uh, with some physical wandering. It's supposed to get warmer soon, probably by August. And, and you can go for a walk and just wonder about stuff. Think about stuff. Think about not just the stuff, but how you relate to it. Have a conversation with God. See, the gospel story, uh, Luke's story is full of Jesus having great conversation with the devil. But I, I think, actually, Jesus spent most of his time talking to God. Because I think that's why he went there. To figure out who he is. I know it's a cliche. I know it's a cliche. You're going to find yourself, Right? So you grab a backpack, you go to Europe. Sooner or later, Liam Neeson has to rescue you. He has a unique set of skills. I know it's a cliche, but it's true. Take the, take the time, and, and you, you, can, you can do some wandering if you want, physical wandering, but take some time to wander with you and wonder about things. Set aside a little bit of time each day and wonder. Now, I know most, most, spirit, most practices that we have in Lent, you're supposed to do it every day, starting on Lent, which was last Wednesday. Ash Wednesday was last Wednesday. So you have a few days to make up. Um, but, but it's worth doing. It's worth doing because it's not just about the sacrifice that you make, the time. It's about what you do with it. Wonder about your relationship with God. Wonder about your relationship with Jesus and the Spirit. How does the Spirit move you? Are you, doing, are you doing what the Spirit is really moving you to do? And if you're not, should you try that? Don't be afraid to try that. This is the time for that. In fact, in the church year, this is the time that's set aside for doing that very thing. Something you might want to take on, for instance, is to find out, I was saying this to somebody the other day, something you might want to take on for Lent with your time set aside and a little wandering is to wander around some other religions, some other faith traditions. Find out more about other traditions that you don't know anything about. Find out more about, in fact, also find out more about your neighbor's traditions. There's at least, what, three or four other churches in town? And in Pinocchio, there's, I don't know, 70. Um, even more opportunity to engage others and find out what their belief is, too. I know what you're thinking. What if I hear something I like and I decide to go to another church? <laughs> How often are we, is that the reason? I don't, wanna, I don't really want to know what Muslims think, because then I'll know. Yes, yes, you will. And you'll be able to have conversations with them and understand them better. I don't really want to know what Buddhists do. They just sit around all day anyway, right? And meditate. Is that, that, then that what they... No, it isn't. Find out more. It's so easy 
to find out more. First of all, it's so easy to find out more about the local traditions because you have neighbors. Talk to them, ask them, find out more. And it really isn't that hard to find out about traditions. There are even, even the more obscure religious traditions. Pastafarians. There's some in Vancouver. Yes, that's people who worship pasta, by the way. They wear colanders on their head. Didn't you see this in the news? Is there, I know it sounds funny, but is there something real in it? Why not find out? There were some guys in Hamilton uh, who had set up a, they'd set up a, a church and established themselves as a religious institution based on the worship of weed. As part of the ritual, they smoke a little pot and sit around and meditate and wonder and stuff. The, okay, fair enough, the government did shut them down and say that they were actually just dealers. But still, <laughs> you had to find that out is the point. Right? Somebody had to go and find out. So here's a good time for that. Here's a good time. As we are coming to what is the most significant festival in the church year, Easter is more important than Christmas, trust me. Now is the time to wonder about ourselves and our relationship with God and to find out more. Maybe, maybe it would be helpful to know not just our neighbors' traditions because then we know our neighbors better. Maybe knowing their traditions would help us. Maybe you have some doubts and some questions. Maybe you should ask them. That's what this time is for. And see, I call that, I call that spiritual wandering. Because not, as I'm sure you saw on the sign if you were in Bashan, not everyone who's wandering is lost. Right? Some people are wandering for a reason. Some people are even wandering knowing that they have a destination. Some people are wandering because in the wandering is where they find the experience that, that moves them forward in life. You don't just have to be a teen backpacking through Europe. Now is the time to do that. Ask questions and wonder. Do a little spiritual wandering. There's a wonderful uh, Christmas carol um, it's an app, old Appalachian carol called I Wonder as I Wander. And I, always, I, I love the image of that. It's, it's invariably connected to somebody, you know, starlit sky, lovely snow-covered vista, just wandering through the snow like it's not minus 40 and a blizzard. And wondering, wondering about God and our relationship with each other in the world and, and stuff. It's the way to go deep, to wonder. Take a little time this Lent and do some spiritual wandering. It's worth it.